Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to do a top five countdown on the note of Hyrax. So I've been uh, doing these animalic note. This is not a top 10 video. And I did two major ones. One on the note of Civet, uh, which of course ended with Koros being number one, but you can go watch that uh, countdown of uh, Civet. And I also did one on the note of Castorium, okay? So two of my favorite animalic notes were covered, and I had a ton of fragrances to show you guys in those videos. Today we're going to talk about a lesser used animalic note called Hyrax or Hyracium. Uh, and we're going to get into that because my scent of the day, which by the way, I'm going to reapply this because it's been a while. So this is how I basically apply my fragrances normally, and I'll then put some on my uh, hand, okay? So I can kind of study how it develops. I've got the dry down here from about five hours ago, uh, and so we'll do a fresh spray and we'll talk about it. And yes, Hyrax is a challenging scent by a zoologist. So, and of course, it's the very first one I wanted to try because I love challenging scents. Okay. So it is good. I will tell you that right off the bat. It is a good fragrance. I enjoy it. Uh, I expected more. I expected to be like almost disgusted, which I didn't get. Uh, I didn't get the disgusting part of it. But I do get the animalics and I do have a very high tolerance for animalics, to be fair. OK, so the average person may smell this and go, oh, my God, that is absolutely disgusting. I don't do that. Uh, very rarely do I smell something that really puts me off? Uh, and so we'll talk about my top top five Hyrax fragrances today. And we have three honorary mentions, but honestly, that's it. That's the entire, uh, in my entire collection, uh, that's all of the fragrances that use the note of Hyrax that I can think of uh, that I came up with. Now, there are some fragrances that use the note of Hyrax that's on my wish list but none, none that I currently have samples or own that I can share with you guys. But before we get into that, first of all, I know I've been away for a couple of days and I post every single day religiously. So being gone for a couple of days, I started to get messages from some people. Hey, are you okay? Everyone thought I was kidnapped or something. So thank you to the people who reached out and checked on me. Uh, it was just, you know, it was a work thing. But um, Let's do an unboxing first before we get into this uh, top five countdown of Hyrax fragrances in my collection because I have a uh, fragrancebuy.ca haul and I know how much you guys love hauls. I love them because I get to see what people are going for, whose noses I trust. Many of the times I like to see what those kind of people are buying. So if you follow me and you're interested in my taste, I think you'll really love these hauls. I ripped off the uh, names, the name on it so I could show you guys the package without doxing myself, um, but fragrancebuy.ca is where I got this from, but they did not send this to me as a gift. I paid for this with my own money, but uh, I'll give them a little shout out since I do like them. They're probably my favorite of all of the discounters. All right, let's do this. Whoops, that didn't work. Let's try the other side. There we go. All right, ready? Let's open this bad boy up, shall we? Ah. Okay, here we go. Beautiful. All right, let's see what we have here. Hello, fragrance connoisseur. Yes, yes. Let's let's just dump right jump right into this because uh, we've got some discontinued gems here, and I know how much you guys love discontinued fragrances. Let's open these bad boys up. The first one is a hard to find fragrance because it's starting to get rarer and rarer. Uh, but I noticed that fragrancebuy.ca has it and then it immediately sells out and I almost pulled the trigger on it a month ago and by the time I went back to actually go make the buy it was gone. So this is Sarah Jessica Parker's stash. Okay now this is a celebrity fragrance believe it or not and uh, I knew that many people like this but when I did a uh, stream with Jonathan, who now has his own channel. Look up Jonathan1970, subscribe to his channel. Uh, I think it's gonna be an amazing channel for fragrances because he's kind of like me. He's just, his first two videos were just a guy with a collection. And I absolutely love it because he just kind of uh, talks about the fragrances and, you know, he has no 
obligation to the brands. He just kind of very much like me uh, says whatever he feels is correct. And that's that. And those are the kind of channels that I like watching. So let's pull up Sarah Jessica Parker's stash, shall we? Um, I heard that she is actually uh, a big frag head, believe it or not. I, uh, SJP stash. Let's just try stash. There we go. Okay, so let me open this bad boy up. 2016, woody and spicy. And uh, it is grapefruit zest with black pepper, sage, atlas cedar, patchouli, ginger, pistachio, frankincense, uh, masoya wood. That's an interesting note. Oh, into the trash. Uh, vetiver and musk. And so... This is discontinued, unfortunately. So as far as the discontinued fragrances go, one day I guess this will... Ah, it comes with a little baggie. How about that? That's kind of cool. Uh, so as far as the discontinued fragrances go, this will have to make my Ramsey's ramblings on discontinued fragrances one day once I've had a chance to wear it and talk about it. But there she is. There's the little bottle. And yeah, so I didn't realize that she was a frag head. But uh, Jonathan was telling me that she is a big-time fragrance connoisseur. And of all of her fragrances, this is the one that kind of gets the most love. I've heard some people compare it to stuff like um, Claude Montana Graphite. Uh, I've heard some people compare it to uh, Tam Dow by Diptyque. And... Okay, that's interesting. So the cap, if you take a look, the cap actually rotates. It's not snug. I don't know if that's a, just a error or what, but uh, uh, I will have to wear this very soon and talk about it. But uh, yes, very excited to have this, especially because at fragrancebuy.ca, this was like 30 bucks. I mean, literally it was like 40 bucks, but Canadian to US conversion makes it like uh, 30. And so people are trying to scalp these on eBay for 100 plus, 150. I even saw one at like 200. And nice little baggie. So 30 bucks, that's a no-brainer. That's how I like to make my buys, you know what I mean? And I'll stack my boxes up nice later on. But for now, they're just going on the floor. Uh, okay, so one down. Next on the list, we have this little bad boy. And I thought this was actually going to be in a tester, but it looks like it is a full sealed bottle. So here we go. Uh, so this next one is a Nishane. And I recently just got a full bottle of uh, Sultan Vetiver, thanks to my friend Rich Mitch from across the pond, my brother from another mother. And uh, this is another Nishane. So back-to-back uh, -back Nishane buys for me. This is a discontinued Nishane is what I was told. Uh, I don't know if it's discontinued or not. It still says it is still available for purchase on uh, Parfumo, but uh, it is called Unatumam. Unutumam. That's how you basically spell it right there. Unutumam. And uh, it is, the reason that I bought this is for one note. So this goes back to, you know, notes and perfumery really influencing me and what I like. And uh, it was the Castorium. So the Castorium, go, go. Oh, I missed it. But it was the uh, Castorium that really uh, ended up making me want to blind buy this because it is an X-ray. It's only 30 mils. Most of their bottles, I think, are 50, if I'm not mistaken. So this might be kind of an older version. I'm not sure, but uh, there you go. Nishane's Unutumam. Uh, and somebody that I trust... Uh, ooh, that is interesting from the atomizer. Uh, somebody that I trust... Oh, yeah, this must be some sort of a tester because look at the cap. Is that how the cap is? Um, I think the caps look different on the real Nishanes. I don't know. Maybe it's just because this is a little 30 mil, but this is a cheap little cap. 
But they were saying that uh, this is the best Nishane out there. And it's someone that I trust. I think it was Pyro that was saying they really like this. I can't remember. Uh, but it is, listen to this note listing. Lavender, Rosemary, Mint, Juniper, Jasmine, Carnation, Patchouli, Amber, and Oregano with Castorium, Cystus, Oak Moss, and Caramel. So, um, the Castorium, you know, definitely turned me on. This is only a 2019 release, so if it is discontinued, boy, that is a fast turnaround. But uh, there you have it. Nishane's Unutumam. Uh, so the box, we'll find a home for you, box. I keep all my boxes, but I usually do not keep my... I usually do not keep my um, fragrances inside of them unless it's like one of the Amouage boxes right here, which I do have a couple Amouages coming up. Um, trying to see if there was a batch code on this. There's a batch code on the box, U-001. What's the bottle? Made in Turkey. I don't see it actually on the bottle, though. That's interesting. Well, I'll play with that later. You go over there for now, and you go over there for now, Miss Stash. And you go over there. We'll clean you up soon. Okay, next on the list we have... What do we have? Ah, yes, we have this little bad boy. So, this also shows as discontinued uh on Parfumo or it did at some point I don't know if it still does but uh this show discontinued on Parfumo so I had to grab it uh and it is Salvatore Ferragamo Pour Homme Oud all right so again this is very cheap it was like 44 bucks on fragrancebuy.ca which you know when you factor that to dollars or something it was it was a, it was cheap you know again people are trying to I missed twice. So people are trying to um, gouge this already, I think, because it's discontinued. Let me see if it shows discontinued. Salva Salvatore Ferragamo Oud. Parfumo is not uh, cooperating. Let me close it and reopen it. Let's see what's going on. Okay, it says connected. Let's try again. Parfumo. Salvatore Ferragamo. Ferragamo. There we go. Ferragamo Oud. Okay, here we go. Pour Homme Oud. All right, let's see what it says. Yeah, it was last marketed by Salvatore Ferragamo Group. So this is uh, made in Italy. Interesting. God, why don't they make these boxes easier to open, you know? Like, I shouldn't have to rip the box just to get it open. And it does have the beautiful... I do like this Salvatore Ferragamo bottle, to be fair. I know it's like a cheaper brand or whatever, but I'm a fan of discontinued fragrances. And how about that bottle? It is very stunning. Um, I remember long ago Ashton saying that uh, he was a big fan of this, and that stuck with me just because he is somebody that, even though he's kind of mainstream, uh, I don't watch him very much, but when I do... Um, you know, he, he doesn't seem like one of the ones who has really gone to the dark side. Even though he has a ton of subscribers, uh, he seems to really keep, you know, who he is at heart still uh, in his videos. And so, uh, I like the original Salvatore Ferragamo Pour Homme, which I have right here. And you can see the similarity in the bottles. This is the 30 mil, I think. Yeah, this is a little 30 mil next to the big boy. Um, but yeah, nice bottles. I like the design. It's very, very interesting mold. This is kind of a fresher 90s fragrance. I think this came out in the late 90s. And this is their Oud edition, which 
interestingly enough, show no notes at all. Zero. No notes listed for that one. Uh, there, there is a comparison on there. They say it's similar to uh, Interlude Black Iris. I can't believe that's true. Let's see if there's any notes listed on base notes, just out of curiosity. I'll be curious to see what the uh, what the note listing is on this Salvatore Ferragamo Porom Oud. Ugh. Now base notes says it can't be reached. Nothing works. How does nothing work in 2022? Let's try again. Base notes. All right, round two, directory. I will say this, Parfumo's website is way easy to navigate than base notes. Uh, Salvatore Ferragamo, search, Porom Oud. Man, they have a ton of fragrances. Porom Oud, here we go. All right, drum roll for the notes according to uh, base notes, Salvatore Ferragamo Porom Oud, no note list. Ah, no, there is. Rum, spices, amber, leather, benzoin, tonka, and guyac wood. Rum, interesting. And what, well, what else is interesting is there's no Oud note listed. So they have a fragrance called Porom Oud with no Oud note listed, which is fine. I get it. It's a designer Oud, I mean... This is more collectible, I guess, since it's discontinued. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be whatever, a little too sweet for me, but that's fine. Uh, and then, let's get to some of the big boys. So I was able to score this. This is like a opened, used, whatever, partial of Animal Animal for Women, Eau de Parfum. And I think this is an older bottle. I'm not 100% sure. Animal Group Parfums. I think this might be an older bottle because of the compressed note listing. But let's open this up, shall we? Okay, how about this? Look at this bottle. Say what you want about it, but... That is badass. That is so 80s. Wow. This was like $17 or something. 19 bucks. I can't remember exactly. But, I mean, for a partial, that's pretty damn full. Would they spray it one time? Animal Group Parfums. It's got the off-centered sprayer. Um, and the reason that I wanted this is I'm actually a big fan of the, oh, uh, they might be under lock and key. Don't ask me why, but, uh, I'm a big fan of Animal Animal for men. And this is Animal for women from 1987. I believe. And let's see. Bergamot, green notes. Green notes. Um, hyacinth, coriander, neroli, rosewood, carnation, honey. Honey's a big one for me. Orris root, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose, ylang ylang, oak moss, castorium, musk, patchouli, vetiver, and civet. So, uh, the note listing actually says coconut in the base, but anytime you see coconut in the base with these 80s fragrances, it's not coconut, it's castorium. Uh, it's compared to things like Ungaro's Diva, which I absolutely love. There's a little mini right here I've talked about before. And they actually have a parfum version of this, believe it or not. This is the Eau de Parfum. But they also have a parfum version of this. So, yeah, I'm stoked because I think that this is going to punch way above its weight class. Animal, animal for women. Something no one talks about. I love talking about these type of fragrances that no one else talks about. 
Um, and it is a cheapie. I mean, I think you can find it on fragrancebuy.ca for 20 bucks. Um, so yes, that's an exciting one. And then we've got some of the bigger hitters here, which is, um, well, they sent me a uh, decant of this one, interestingly enough. Latafa Eternal Oud. Do you guys know that one? Uh, this was a freebie, I guess, a sample, a 20 mil sample. They're like, here, just take it. We don't, we don't even care. 20 mil sample. I don't think I've ever seen a 20 mil freebie sample. Uh, Eternal Oud. Well, that's more than enough for me to chat about it, so I guess we'll hear about some Latafa Eternal Oud one day. And um, I think I got three three more to go here. Two Amouages and one Beaufort. So let's do the Beaufort first. This one was a tester, as you can see. No box, but I don't care. It was like 80 bucks. For 80 bucks, I'll take a, I'll take a flyer on this. Uh, this is... This is Beaufort's Tanere. Tanere? There is a um, Paco Rabanne Tanere, T E N E R E. This is Tanere. Uh, and man, it just smells like a Beaufort straight out of the atomizer. Made in Great Britain. Let's see what they have to say about Beaufort. Beaufort Tenere, Tonere, 2015. Um, Gunpowder, this is what I love. I blind bought this based on the notes. Gunpowder, lemon, bergamot, ginger, brandy, blood, spindrift, cypress, lime, grapefruit, bergamot, woods. Woods. Uh, amber, cedarwood, fir balsam, birch, and cistus. Smoky, woody. I mean, uh, I think the original uh, bottle of this was called 1805, if I'm not mistaken. It was clear. You could see the really dark juice, but it's supposedly the exact same fragrance. They just rebranded it. Uh, and I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of this house, so I can't wait to get my nose on this for real and actually wear it. Okay, and then we've got two two left, the two big guns. Well, first of all, God, I hope you're an older bottle. Please be an older bottle. Please be an older bottle. This is what stopped me from buying this before, is Emouage Figment Man. Now, um, I don't know, let's see which one we get. I really did not want the newer versions of this, but I did want this this fragrance for a while. It's one of the only fragrances from the Christopher Chong era that uh, I did not own a full bottle of. I own basically all the rest. So this is the last one. So let's open her up. I don't want to drop the bottle either. Okay, it is an older one. Happy days. So it's got the writing right here on the front and on the side instead of down here. Um, so I'm happy with this. Good. This is what I wanted. Made in Oman. And I have smelled this before. This is not... Yeah, I remember that smell. I definitely remember that. It's so earthy. It's peaty. It's peaty and earthy. It's like uh, smelling a... It's like smelling like this soil. You know, like this animalic soil. But you know what? It's an Anique Minardo. And I just ranked my Anique Minardo video like a week ago. So I wish I would have waited because this would have had to been involved um, in the ranking. But, man, does, uh, does that logo seem off to you guys? Maybe I'm losing my mind here. Maybe it's the bottle. Must be the bottle. The bottle makes it look off a little bit. I know that um, 
someone, maybe it was Renaud Salman, when they were talking, said that all of these are actually put on by hand. Like someone actually puts each one of these on the bottle by hand in, in, in Oman or wherever. But uh, it does seem a little lower if you take a look. Like look how close to the, look at where the bottom of the logo is on this older one. And then look at where the bottom is here. It's very close to the O and the U. But uh, I'm sure it's legit. I'm sure fragrancebuy.ca is not selling fake bottles. Um, so, and it smells exactly like I, what I remember it from the sample. So everything looks to be on the up and up. I think there might be even a batch code installed on the box too. Is there? Yes, there is. 003339. Well, it doesn't match whatever's on the bottom of the bottle. Maybe it's not supposed to. 003339. Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, now I have to find a home for you. Where do you want to live? Uh, you want to live with your other Amwaj brethren? Where am I going to put you? Eh, okay. You can live right there for now. All right. Um, so next we have one more amouage to discuss and then the unboxing is done. We'll get to the video. The final unboxing from the fragrancebuy.ca haul. And I'm very happy to have this because uh, it is getting very hard to find. And there's rumors that it might even be discontinued. And I love it because I had some samples of it. Um, but this is Amouage Opus 6. Opus 6. There you go. Uh, the library collection. You will be staying in the, bo in the box, the bottle. And this was the most expensive one from the entire haul. Um... Yeah, this is the most expensive one from the entire haul by far. By far, this was the most expensive. Um, and I have had, I've got like six mils of, of samples of this. So I've had a pretty good, you know, full wearings and understanding of what it all is, of what this fragrance is all about. And I deemed it full bottle worthy for sure. Mostly because, um, Instead of buying, you know, the new stuff Amouage is putting out, I would rather buy this, to be honest with you. Um, this is kind of where my head's at with Amouage right now. So this is cool. So this little stand comes out, and the bottle sits in here. Remember I was complaining about the Amouage bottle not sitting up on my other one? Because this is very thin, very light, you know, very uh, small surface area, so it's easy to tip. And so this thing is exactly what I needed. But my other bottle's a tester. So it doesn't have the cool cap. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, I love this. So someone was telling me in the comments one day that um, this particular fragrance, Opus 6, was actually the idea of the, of the fragrance was that um, they wanted to make a oud fragrance that uh, did not smell of, that had no oud in it. So they wanted to make a fragrance that smelled of oud that used no oud, right? Uh, that was kind of the plan. And so Opus 6 was a creation by Pierre Negrin and... Alberto Morias, it was a tag team, and it's a spicy oriental with um, laurel, pepper, frankincense, silk vine, nagamatha. This is now, so uh, I, I did a video on Cipriol, or nagamatha oil, and I don't think I've ranked them yet, but uh, the, the top Cipriol fragrances are this, Opus 6, um, Promise, Amouage Silver Oud, 
and Emwage Journeyman. So Emwage has like three of the four best Cypriol fragrances I've ever smelled. There are some others. Roja has one called United Arab Emirates, I think, which had a really nice Cypriol note to it. So there are others, but man, Amouage kills it when they use Cypriol correctly, and I'm loving the uh, loving the presentation. Like it's a little book. This will this will look great. Um, they've changed the presentation. Look at this presentation, and look at the new one for uh, Silver Oud. Tell me, I'm. Tell me I'm completely out of my mind, but I mean, um, I much prefer the old presentation of Amouage. Much. This one looks kind of cheap, actually. It opens up like this. And I mean, this is just like cheap little padding. That's it. Um, whereas here, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being... I just miss Christopher Chong, man. But he is going to, um, he is going to a house which, I, they've got this blue bottle, I can see the, I can see the bottle in my mind, but I can't think of the house. Just too much, too much, uh, stuff to remember. It'll come to me randomly. Um, let me put this back. All right, you go there, you go there, you go here, and you go here. Okay. All right, so let's do this. Uh, thanks for watching the unboxing. I know some of you guys love unboxings, and I know some of you don't, but uh, I enjoy them, so I'm going to continue to do them. So uh, let's do the top five Hyrax fragrances. So I've been wearing... Um, Hyrax by Zoologist all day, and it kind of uh, prompted this video, if you will. So um, let's talk a little bit about Hyrax and, and what it is first, okay? So Hyrax is basically uh, a small rodent that uh, mostly lives in Africa, North Africa, some parts of the Middle East, and it's, it's dried up crystalline fecal matter in a nutshell, okay? So it has this animalic warmth to it. So the way that I described it, the way that I would describe Hyrax to someone who has never smelled it, like let's say you've only smelled uh, civet or castorium, you've never smelled Hyracium, the animalic note, not Hyrax, the perfume. That'll have its own review sometime uh, in the future. But the animalic note itself to me, it's also known as African stone, you can hear it referred to as because uh, the fecal matter dries in the sun. And it, um, the way that I would describe it is imagine if you had like a rock, okay? And maybe like an um, animal, uh, I imagine like a bear doing this or something, but imagine like some sort of animalic, musky smelling animal comes on that rock and like rubs his back on it every day or like scratches his ass on the rock, you know, and every single day he does it. And over time, the rock begins to smell of the, you know, a warmth of that animal, right? So you get the fur kind of peeling off and rubbing onto the rock or maybe even like a tree, right? If an animal like kind of rubbed itself on the tree or urinated on the tree uh, and they left this... Uh, Maybe they urinated and then rubbed themselves on the tree. And they left this, you know, warmth of the animal behind. And then you come along. You don't actually smell the animal itself, but you smell the spot where the, uh, where the animal was uh, scratching itself. And that particular warmth of uh, musky, um, little bit fecal matter is what Hyrax to me smells like. So a little bit of background. There's a great um, website I would recommend you checking out by Sylvain Delacorte, who's big into the perfume world. You can research Sylvain Delacorte, um, but uh, the website is amazing. If you just Google Sylvain Delacorte, it'll come up. But uh, the definition and origin of Hyracium is on this website. And it's a essence derived from an animal which is, is commonly called uh, Damon de Rochers or Cape Damon. So it's a rodent, 
uh, of the ungulate family is the way that it's listed here, similar to a large marmot, okay? And uh, it has two small characteristic fangs and it lives in calves. And hyrax is created from the excrement of that particular animal is, is where it actually comes from. So it's washed away by river water in very porous soil and then it decomposes with this pheromone rich urine. So it mixes with the soil and the roots and um, it's fossilized in the caves where these animals live. Uh, rock hyrax is also have seen them referred to, but the liquid basically petrifies over a very long process. And the rocks themselves, to get to that process of where it is um, crystallized, okay, or completely impregnated, can sometimes take hundreds of years, believe it or not. And so the harvest of uh, hyrax or hyracium essence has existed since uh, antiquity in East Africa. And it's carried out in pretty rudimentary uh, conditions. It, um, so the, high, the hyracium pickers, they're responsible for collecting this uh, soaked stone with, with the liquid. So they have to climb into the caves using ladders and I'm sure it's not an easy job for them to do. But they end up breaking the stones and pick them up and carry them by camel through the cities in the Middle East and Africa. And according to ancient texts, they were saying that the um, um, hy hyracium was basically part of the mummification process of the ancient Egyptians. And so it got all these ancient names, the Stone of God, the Stone of Africa, African Stone. Uh, some people refer to it for its healing processes. Some African people use it to stop bleeding, disinfect wounds, relieve migraines, anxiety, skin problems, you know, convulsions related to epilepsy, anything you can think of almost. Um, and so the transformation process of hyracium, the harvested stones become brown and brittle and then are crushed, okay? And the dark oil that flows out is treated with hexane, which is a hydrocarbon, and then iced and filtered. And a concentration stage follows until a resinoid absolute uh, is extracted, basically. And it can be ve vegetable or raw material. And the oil can be processed through an infusion of alcohol. Uh, and so it's a very rare and expensive pro project uh, or, you know, material. And it is, on it, it is also the only authorized natural animal product, apart from ambergris, which is even more expensive, that perfumers can use in modern, you know, perfume, in any day perfume, Dior, Chanel, uh, Guerlain, they can just use it, uh, just like they can use ambergris, because it doesn't affect the animal. It's, it's like ambergris, it, they're not killing the whale to get the ambergris, the ambergris is spit up, right? And uh, I mentioned it gives off this musky, fecal, urinous, um, animal left behind smell. I always think of like, you know, animals may, or maybe think of like where the animal sleeps, you know, out in the wild. Maybe they have like a den, a bed, right? And they sleep, the fur is left behind and the skin rubs on the rock, the skin rubs on the trees, they piss on the trees they live on, live around. And it really falls like somewhere between civet and castorium. But I think it sits a little bit closer to castorium because hyracium has this leathery aspect to it. And that leathery aspect is what's missing from civet. Civet usually at the pissy aspect, right? Hyracium, hyracium um, does give you this indolic, pissy, um, it does give you this indolic, pissy type vibe, but it even gives you more of the leathery castorium-like vibe, but it's somewhere in the middle, okay? And um, and so it's a, it's a fragrance that, number one, is extremely challenging to Western noses, extremely. As you can see, I'm gonna list every single fragrance in my collection that has hyracium in it, and it's only um, eight. I have eight perfumes out of my entire collection that use hyracium, and I'm an animalic lover, 
okay? Now, there are some that I would like that you will not see on this list, okay? Uh, an example of that would be maybe something like MXXX by Eris Parfums. That's something that uh, Rich Mitch has recently got a full bottle of, and we also learned that it's a limited time release. It's a um, it's a it's a limited uh, offering. It's not supposed to to be around forever. But uh, MXXX is the big one that kind of comes to mind. Um, the other high racks perfumes that I saw that I kind of have on the wish list, MXXX is, is the big one. Uh, but outside of that one, there is a fragrance from Prin Lomros called Homa, H-O-M-A. I've never smelled that one. Uh, there's a fragrance from um, House of Matriarch, which you'll see a couple House of Matriarchs on here. Actually, they're going to be the first three on the list. They're going to be the three honorary mentions. And the reason they're only honorary mentions is it's the way that the owner of the House of Matriarch uses the Hyrax or the Hyracium. It's always in the base. And it's always just a little bit to add, I think, kind of texture and to make it a little more interesting than if they weren't there. But there's a fragrance that came out in 2017 called uh, Kefera. And I've never smelled Kefera. But it's on the list. You will you will hear more about the House of Matriarch soon. I I've talked about them before in a couple of videos, but I have some samples and decants and you know uh, discovery atomizers, and I will be talking about the brand more. So let's get started. Honorary mention number one, and this is a ranked list, but uh, honorary mention number one. And remember, I'm ranking the note of Hyracium in these perfumes. Okay, I'm not ranking the fragrance overall. I'm ranking the note of Hyracium and how it's used and how and, and if it and if you can really appreciate it because um, you know if I was ranking the perfume the list might be a little bit different although it, it, it's pretty close to how I would rank them as far as enjoyability as well but I'm ranking the note itself so honorary mention number one is going to be this little bad boy and this is called Kazemi by the House of Matriarch. And Kazemi is a rose fragrance, okay? Uh, so this is a little, I don't know what this is, two mils or something like that. More than enough for me to talk about on the channel one day. Uh, but it's a nice rose, beautiful rose. Um, rose and rose and rose. There's like five different types of rose in here. Uh, rose Atar, Rose, Rose Otto, White Rose, Wild Rose. I mean, it's a, it's a rose-centered fragrance with some other flowers to give it um, there's even bourbon rose in here, which you almost never see. There's some white ginger lily to give it, you know, contrast. You don't just want rose, rose, rose normally. And there's some woods, green heartwood, cedar, Virginian cedar with a Papanax, oak moss, oud, hyracium, ambergris, and exotic spices. And so every time you see the hyracium note, it's in the base and it's very toned down. You're not going to get the high racium notes in the House of Kazemi's offerings like you will some of these other ones we're going to talk about. Um, so Kazemi comes in as honorary mention number one, and I will do a early impression on Kazemi very soon. It's supposed to be like a beautiful, floral, spicy fragrance that we'll, we'll get into. Okay, next uh, honorary mention from the house, and we're sticking with the House of uh, Matriarch, is a fragrance called Bittersweet symphony and bittersweet symphony came out in 2015 uh and this is a very interesting fragrance probably full bottle worthy to be honest with you i don't think i would buy a full bottle of kazemi uh because i have so many other rose fragrances i love so much but um this has a very interesting note of henna in the top. Henna and gentian uh, with vervain. There's some different teas in here. Black tea, white tea, green tea, cacao. There's saffron. There's spikenard, Bulgarian geranium, cystus. And, but it's the base. There's this beautiful charred wood note. And the charred wood really blends with the oud and the hyracium to give it this animalic vibe. And I think I understand why she's using hyracium in the base. It gives it... She also uses real ambergris, I believe. She, she claims 99.9% .9 of her fragrances are like natural too. 
that she uses very little synthetics, if I remember. Her fragrances are extremely expensive, though. There's even a note of dragon's blood in here, which is supposedly the name of these red resins, which can be obtained from different plant species and stuff like that. Um, but she claims my source sandalwood in the base of Bittersweet Symphony as well. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, if, she's, if they say it, we'll, we'll kind of roll with it. Um, but the oud, which I think she uses real oud too, I'm not 100% sure, um, Hyrax, Hyracium, and Ambergris in the base makes this smell like a very special fragrance. Uh, so I think Bittersweet Symphony is one I would really consider a full bottle of, but this is honorary mention number two. Honorary mention number three is the other full bottle potential from this house, and it is called, it used to be called Blackbird, and I think they changed the name. I think now the House of Matriarch calls it um, Black Number One. I don't know why, but uh, this is a leathery, resinous perfume. And you know me, I love my leathers. Leathery, resinous with some very interesting notes. There's some coniferous woods in the top with kelp. Very strange note of kelp. And it does smell like you're smelling something uh, oceanic, not necessarily marine-like, but something from the ocean, uh, and white sage, and the heart of oud and cannabis and amber. So someone asked me to make a, uh, video on cannabis fragrances, and honestly, I don't have very many. There is, um, Kinski, which I absolutely love. It's probably my favorite cannabis fragrance. There is uh, Nasomanto's Black Afghano, and there's Blackbird. I have very few cannabis fragrances. I think Kinski probably does it the best, but this is very good. This is full bottle worthy potential because the base is black leather, ambergris, and hyracium. And I love leather fragrances. And this is a very interesting resinousy, oody, you know, the cannabis and kelp add this interesting green, you know, tint to the fragrance. Um, definitely you'll be hearing more about this one very, very soon. Uh, Blackbird from the House of Matriarch. Okay, so those were the top three honorable mentions. And the reason they're all honorable mentions and not in the top five is because of the way that the Hyracium is used. It's really hidden under everything else. It's really there. It's almost like you're not supposed to smell it. You're supposed to just you know, almost feel its texture, feel its warmth underneath, okay? The next, the top five we're going to talk about, you'll really get to into smelling the, the Hyracium, okay? If you really want to smell perfume with the note of Hyracium in it, these are the five to go for. So at number five, it's a fragrance I actually have a review on the channel already. You can go check it out. It's from the house of uh, Prin. And it's called Anthamara. So I have to give a shout out to my buddy Lee from Fragnanimous. He is amazing. If you want fragrances like Prin Lomros, Russian Adams, Arige Le Doré, uh, Dmitry Bortnikov's Bortnikov brand, or Matthew Meleg's Meleg, um, then check out Lee from Fragnanimous. He only ships to the U.S. and Canada, I think, unfortunately. But if you are in the U.S. and Canada, fragnanimous.com is where I get a lot of my, um, th those kind of fragrances. Uh, and this is an interesting one because it uses real Siberian deer musk. It uses all kind of uh, animalic notes kind of blended together. There's real castorium. Uh, it's, there's pine tar, so it's kind of tarry uh, with that Hyracium Absolute. And the Hyracium Absolute, is definitely noticeable here. I This is in the ballpark. If you've smelled Ensar Oud EO number no. two with that musk animalic facet and lots of spices, there's a ton of spices in the top of this, okay? Uh, and there's also some strange camphorous like notes like Violet Leaf Absolute, Black Spruce, it's camphorous. There's black currant buds, there's fir balsams, frankincense, cinnamon, cumin. So the cinnamon or the cumin, I should say, in the top, is normally a note that I really love, but here they mixed it with spikenard and a couple other kind of challenging things, where even for me, I kind of struggled with this. If you go watch my review, I'm like, mm, no, this one's tough.
But if you want to give uh, a fragrance that uses real high, ra high racks of smell, uh, check out Anthamara. It is challenging, though. It's very big and very challenging. I would not buy a full bottle of that. Okay, so the one I'm wearing today comes in at number four. And it is very good. The problem is it's up against the top three absolute bangers for me. Just, I mean, they nail Hyrax. Um, and so this, even though it has the name Hyrax in it, has to come in at number four for me. Uh, and I am enjoying it. It's an animalic resinous fragrance with Elemi, pink pepper, saffron, and Turkish rose. And the saffron kind of really takes the lead when you first spray it. You'll get that... Um, You'll get that big saffron hit in the opening, and it'll it'll almost smell like you're smelling a Middle Eastern style fragrance with the saffron, rose, pink pepper, elemi. You know, elemi is like this lemony frankincense, but then it quickly begins to change, and you really start to get this waxy styrax and hyrax. The hyracium uh, comes out in the heart with a floral touch, but not too much. There is some hyacinth. There's also some whiskey, which I don't get. I don't get any whiskey in this. Maybe my nose is broken, but I'm not getting any alcohol boozy notes at all. If if it wouldn't have been there, I wouldn't have even known. Uh, and a base of amber, castorium, civet, benzoin, patchouli, sandalwood, and tonka. And so um, it is a very good representation of, of Hyrax. Uh, it really almost smells like their den, you know, like you're smelling a bed that they have slept on all of their life and it's never been through a washing machine because it's outdoors in a cave and, you know, they stole like a dog bed and dra dragged it back to their cave and they've been sleeping on it for decades, you know, generations of Hyraxes have been sleeping on this uh, uh, bed and it it is challenging. Do not wear this one to work. I'll do a full review on it some point soon. Uh, it's good. I don't think it's full bottle worthy though. I was also expecting to be much more challenged. You know, I was expecting to be swept off my feet, uh, almost offended, and it doesn't do that for me. This is very wearable. I would have no problem wearing this. It has this sweet and sour aspect to the animalics, and that's very interesting to me because it has this almost sweet musk even though there's no musk listed, the sweetness could be from the civet. There could be the sweet synthetic civet in the base kind of coming out with this sour hyracium. And that's the way my nose perceives it as like sweet and sour. It's good, um, but I don't think I would buy a full bottle. And then this could easily be number one. The problem is it could be number one on every single animalic list I do. Uh, because it has everything. It has skunk, hyrax, muskrat, uh, ambergris, real deer musk, real civet, real castorium. It has everything. Goat hairs tincture. Uh, it's uh, Suga Parfums TSVGA. Whoops. I guess I should flip it right side up for you guys. TSVGA. And it is Fiona. So I've talked about this. If you're an animalic lover, uh buy this. Buy this Discovery Atomizer, okay? You will thank me later. It's an amazing animalic floral. Um, it's so good. Three or four different types of oud, oak moss absolute. The, the floral absolutes in here feel like something Dmitry Bortnikov would use with champaka, lotus, frangipani, langy lang, jasmine. Um, there is a little bit of vanilla, but it's French vanilla absolute. It's not super sweet. And it's just that mixture of the animalics, the three different types of ambergris, hyracium and hyracium absolute, real deer musk, real civet, real goat hair tincture, muskrat, you know, all this crazy stuff. Skunk Accord. This is easily one of my favorite animalic perfumes of all time. And it didn't make my top 100 because I didn't have a full bottle. God knows where I would put this on the top 100 if I, if I you know, was forced to, to rank it because I only ranked full bottles uh, and I have two of these little Discovery Atomizers, but uh, it is very good. Okay, uh, number two. Number two is probably my favorite musk 
fragrance at the moment. One of my favorites for a design, for a, you can just go to the store. Well, you can't go to the store, but you can go to a perfume house and buy this. It's not one of the indie houses, okay? My favorite musk of all time is a Rige Le Dore Siberian musk. That stuff is off the chain, perfect. That is a perfect musk, absolute perfection as far as a representation goes. But for something like this that uses muscanone, which is a, um, it's a musk ingredient that is produced by Fermanish. Okay, so one of the big brands makes the musk note in this uh, synthetically derived musk, which is okay. I'm okay with that. But the amazing part about this fragrance is the mixture of the resins, the florals, and the hyrax, the hyracium. And it's this. It is... Parfum d'Empires, which is a brand I absolutely love at the moment, Musk Tonkin. Now, this is the discontinued Eau de Parfum, okay? I've never smelled the X-Tray. So, uh, the X-Tray is the one you can just buy from the store right now. Fuck. It is so good. Um, it is just so good. I mean... Uh, better than Musk's Kublai Khan for me. If you're thinking Musk Kublai Khan is the gold standard, this is better for me, for my nose, for what I love to wear. Completely unisex. This would smell amazing on a man or a woman. It just has this primal, very primal, animalic, musky feel to it. You know, this, uh, like, like, if he, like, you know how uh, animals will be in heat, like elephants will be in heat, and you can see the, you know, uh, when when male elephants are, I, I forget what they call it, but, uh, you know, whenever they're basically fighting for the female elephants, they get that stuff running down the side of their face, you know? it, it this, fra this fragrance reminds me of what humans would smell like if they were in heat and uh, you could smell it, you know, and you could smell the human being in heat. It is so good. Oh, man. But it's very challenging. Um... And finally, finally, we've got number one. What do you guys think it is? Uh, number one. Number one uh, Hyrax fragrance is from my girl, Liz Moores, who, go check out my interview with her if you have not seen it. I'm telling you, she is an amazing interview. An hour and a half went by like that or whatever it was, an hour and 15 minutes. Um, this is... One of my favorite animalic fragrances, probably my favorite Papillon, but Anubis challenges this, but uh, it is very good. It is Salome. Salome is number one. Um, what can I say about Salome? I've talked about it before. It's one of the best animalic fragrances of all time. I mean, if you like Bala Versailles, by Jean Duprez, if you know that, Roja Dove put that as one of the most important um, historical perfumes of the past hundred years in his fifth floor of Herod's little boutique that he has up there. Uh, and the price of those vintage Jean Duprez fragrances went through the roof, right? Bella Versailles, I have the Pure Parfum, it is amazing. This is equally as good, and you can just go buy this right now. And Liz Moore said that this is sex on the skin, and it is. It is absolutely sex on the skin, spot on. Her interpretation of sex on the skin is perfect. I love this stuff. Um, it's probably backup bottle worthy. It's jasmine with hyracium, Turkish rose, carnation, oak moss, styrax, bitter orange, patchouli, bergamot, orange blossom. But <laughs> it is so good. I mean, it, it it does have a little bit of a floral tint to it. Um, it has a bit of that, you know, unwashed lady's skin to it, if you will. This, um, you know, you've been cooped up in the room all day uh, with your lover and there's no window. You can't open the windows because it's raining outside. Uh, let's say the air conditioning broke and it's hot in the room and it's just you two in the room, right? And And this is... Uh, this is, that's, this is that vibe. This is that, uh, you know, that feel. It's so good. I love, I mean, just smelling it puts a smile on my face. I think it's the best use of hyracium. It's, it's, um, 
used to perfection in this fragrance for me. Uh, and it is 100% backup bottle worthy. Everything the brand does, and by the way, she did not send this to me. This was, uh, she has not sent me any bottles. Everything you see on 99.9 .9 of, these, of these brands I've paid for with my own money. And that's important to me because then I can say whatever I want about it. I don't feel indebted to the brands, um, but it is uh, it is very worthy. If you want to get to know the note of Hyrax, Hyracium, Salome is where I'd start and just work your way back. Um, amazing stuff. I hope you guys appreciate it. I know it's a very under-talked about note, but wearing Hyrax today from Zoologist, I really felt like a video on the note would be worthwhile. I hope you guys got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. I can't wait to wear these. Stash, uh, the Nishane, Salvatore Ferragamo Oud, Porom Oud. This is crazy. I can't wait to wear this either. Um, and then of course the Beaufort, Beaufort London, Tanere, and uh, the two uh, Amouages, Figment Man, which has long been missing from my collection and uh, Opus 6. So, hope you guys appreciated the video. We're at an hour, which is a good stopping point. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Love seeing your faces down below. Uh, love it. Love the interaction. So, cheers, guys, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.